What's up YouTubers, Waldiv here. Today we're looking at doing a dedicated server. Uh, a lot of requests for how to build a dedicated server. Uh, it's not too hard, a uh, little bit time consuming. Um, that's about the biggest part of it. Uh, not much to do with coding. Pretty much everything is done within the editor itself and a few blueprints and a few maps. So let's get started. What we're gonna do is open up the launcher and I got 4.10 installed. And we go to new project and you can do it in blueprint or C++. I choose to do C++ in a third person. And then go ahead and set your project area wherever you want. And create your project and we'll go from there. So with our project actually created now, uh, we have the file system here and we have the U project. And because I did a C++ project, it gives a solution as well. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to right click right on the project and this will be if you have a C++ project. Um, if you don't, you're going to have to open the project, make a new C++ class, save the project, and then do this step that I'm about to do now. But we right click on the project itself, go to switch Unreal version, and I have 4.10 as the launcher. Source build shows up because I have a source build of 4.10 installed on my system. It'll generate the project files. You can show log if you want. And we're done. So we go ahead and open up the project. All right, so before we open up the project, what we gotta do is a couple precursor steps to get this ready to actually build and compile. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the config section and we're going to open up the default engine INI file. In here we have to actually interject the online subsystem to which we're going to use just the null setting for the online subsystem. We can just interject this anywhere but copy and paste online subsystem and default platform services null. Save this out, go ahead and exit. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the source. And here we need to actually set in a target. This is going to be our server target. Uh, this is for when we actually build this in Visual Studio. But what we're going to do is just right click, add a new file, go to text document. And you need to show the file types in Windows Explorer to be able to actually set it to a CS file. But we need to have the same name convention. So it's going to be OSS underscore learn server dot target dot CS. And we can just right click and edit this. And as you can see, it's blank. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to the web page, which I'll have the link in the video. And we're going to copy the server script CS file and paste it in here. And this is what we come up with. And there's a couple changes that we need to make. Where it says game server target, we need to actually change that. So we take game and we call it OSS learn. Make sure we're spelling it right. OSS underscore learn. server target and then same here OSS underscore learn server target and then lastly this game here OSS learn we can save this out go ahead and close the file go back to our main here and we can actually open up the project If you get this DLL here missing, you can just rebuild it and it'll take just a quick second and it'll open it up. And now with our project open, you can see it's just a standard third person template. Obviously I have C++ classes because I did a C++ project. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and do a little bit of maintenance. Firstly, uh, to build this project correctly using Unreal Frontend.exe, um, we need to have a maps folder. Otherwise, uh, the maps won't actually show up in the tool, and therefore we can't build the maps. So just simply call this maps, make sure it's directly under the content. 
we're going to take all maps that we have in the project and we're going to move them over. Inside of maps, we're going to make two additional maps. One is going to be called entry and another is going to be called transition. I'll explain the purpose of both of these in a second here. Uh, pretty much that's it for this. Um, we're going to set up the project settings here real quick. Go to maps and modes and we're going to change the default for the client which is going to be default maps. We're going to change to entry and I'll explain this here in a second. Editor startup, uh, because it's red, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right file. But we're going to do this drop down here, and we're going to open up a new area, server default map. And we're going to change that to third person example. And so let me explain what's going on here. Actually, let me save here real quick so that I can see. Oh, one second, I just got a memory error. Just simply close out of the window, come back in, project settings, maps and modes, and transition now shows up. Okay, so what we have going on here is when a server launches itself, um, it's going to use a server default map, which we're going to set up, not transition, sorry, third person example. And the client, when a client loads, it's going to use the default map here for the game default map which is going to be obviously the client's version. What we're going to do in this map is we're just going to simply open an IP address in the event begin play. What happens is, is the client will load this map and then the server will actually feed itself or feed the attached clients the map that it set to default. So when a client comes in and it opens IP address, it logically connects to the server. The server will pass at the third person example map. Uh, the transition map is actually for later purposes. Uh, we put it in here just to get things out of the way. But what happens is a server, when it goes to transition from one map to another for a client, um, it needs a placeholder map to be able to do this transition. It's not a hot loadable type feature. Uh, it can't just take the map that it's currently on, dump it, and then join a new map, it has to have a loaded map to be able to A, dump the previous one, and B, load the next one. So that's where that middleman comes into play. Transition map will actually have absolutely no data inside of it. It'll just simply be a blank map. So we can go ahead and close out of there, save all. Third person example, there has to be nothing inside of this, okay? One thing that we're going to want to do as far as cleanup is we're going to want to actually delete the pawn that's made by default in the template. So let's get that guy out of there. Save selected. And we're going to switch over to the entry map here real quick. And we're going to go up to blueprints, open level blueprint. And in the begin play, like I said, we're going to run a console command. And that console command we have to run from the controller. And it's going to be a simple command. It's going to be open and your IP address. Um, for my local LAN, I have a 192.168.1.102 is what it's going to be for my server that I'm going to host this on. Compile and save. And we are pretty much done inside of this. So at this point in time, uh, even though the documentation says we don't need to, we're actually going to package this content um, inside of the editor itself. So we go up to File, Package Project. Let's open up the package settings. And we're going to be really high level, real brief here. Um, we want to set it to development. We want to set the actual project build area here. So we're going to go to the project folder. For this one, it's OSS Learn. Um, I like to make a build folder for all builds to go into and just select that. Um, we don't want full rebuild. Uh, we're going to drop down the settings here. Uh, English, unless you're on any other kind of language. And pretty much that's it. We can go ahead and close out, save all prior, and go ahead and start your build. I do a Win64 uh, just because 
you know, I am into that. Um, that's all I've ever done is 64 bit. Uh, if you're only making 32 bit clients, you can do that as well. I don't think there's much difference other than the operating system that the client actually plays this from. So win 64 and it's auto default because we set the, the project settings and click okay. I'm gonna pause this and come back when this is done. All right guys, so our package is complete and last step that we need to do inside the editor is to actually just compile. This should go pretty quick. And that just took a few seconds there and uh, go ahead and save all and exit out of the editor. All right, so our next step is actually gonna be opening up the solution project. And what we wanna do, because we've done some work in the editor, is we just wanna right click, generate visual studio project files. This will go ahead and just build or add any kind of extra stuff that we've done inside the editor up to the solution. And that should just take a minute. Pop open the solution. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build this in an editor mode, not a server mode yet. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up. If you do not have this bar here, you can access the build configurations by going to build and configuration manager. And we want to make sure that we're in editor and win 64 and close. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to control shift B or right click the solution and build solution or go up to build and build solution. It's all the same. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and come back when it's done. Okay, guys, our build went pretty quick. And what we're going to do now is we need to use the Unreal Frontend.exe to actually package our project outside of the editor. And there's two ways to get that. Um, first off, if you build from source code and you've built this before, you'll already have it. And if you did build it previously and used it, you already know where it's at, but it's in your source code under engine, binaries, Windows 64. And we are looking for Unreal frontend.exe. To get this, if you don't have it, simply go into Visual Studio and we're going to go to the class view. And here is Unreal front end and you'll highlight it, right click it and simply build. And that will build out to wherever your source project folder is and then into the subdirectories like I said before. So we're going to go ahead and open the Unreal front end And with the front end open, we have the project launcher here. Uh, yours will be probably blank here unless you've done projects before in this. But we need to simply add a custom profile, which will bring you to this window. Uh, we have to pick the project. So you'd up here in the project, click on browse, browse to your project, and select the U project file. The build options, um, I'm going to tell you guys now that every time that I've tried to do the Unreal front end in a server build, um, the very first time that I run it, it fails for some reason. Um, I don't have this checked at first. Uh, I do see if it'll go through and build without it, but checking this will actually do exactly what Visual Studio is doing. It's building your configuration and as you can see in a development fashion. Uh, cook options will be blank at first. I believe it's going to be on the fly. Uh, we need to put it by the book. And we need to select Windows Server. And then we need to select English at the bottom. Maps, as you can see, uh, no maps were shown. Uh, let's see if I have an error here. Unreal Projects. Yes, that's why I had this from a previous configuration and now all the maps are shown so we want to select entry third person and transition package do not package and deploy we don't want to deploy uh, these are live settings so there is no save button or apply or anything uh, you can name it up here by just simply 
clicking on the name and giving it a name. Go ahead and click back. And we're just going to simply launch this profile here. And I'm going to pause this and wait for it to finish. All right, guys. So this took a little bit, but we actually got pretty lucky. I must have done something right. And this finished without any errors. Uh, if you do have errors in this process, again, just simply go back to the configuration here. I'm sorry, the profile and go into edit the configuration and run it as a build. And maybe that's why I didn't have errors because I had it checked anyways. <laughs> so anyways, um, if you do have errors, like I said, go in there, check the build, run through, and it'll go through and do all the stuff it needs to. So we can close out a front end, go back into Visual Studio, go back to our Solution Explorer, and we can actually now build this in a server edition. Uh, again, go up here and change the configuration to development server. And if you don't have that window, again, you can find it from the build menu and then the configuration manager, development server and Windows, sorry, Win64. And control shift B and that'll build. Uh, this will probably just take a few minutes depending, uh, might take, you know, 20, 30 minutes. It depends on your system. So I'm gonna pause this and come back when it's done. Okay guys, now that all the building's done and everything, we can actually go into our project folder here and go into binaries, Win64, and we see now that we have the server.exe. And what I do is I actually make a shortcut for it. And the reason I do this is we open up the properties of the shortcut and we want to append the executable with dash log that you can see right here. And what that does is it spits out a log file. The server runs in the background if you don't have it as logging like this and you really can't see that it's running and really can't determine if you have uh, socket connections or not. So go ahead and click OK, run the shortcut and that'll pop open this log file. And as you can see here, there's the computer that it's on with the IP address and it's listening on port 7777. So we can take and put this off to the side here and we can actually go up to OSS Learn. We're going to go into our build and we're going to go to the No Editor and we're going to run the executable for the game. It'll pop open and we have this nice black screen here. Uh, this might be a little error on my part. I was expecting this to actually just auto connect to the server um, by having on the level begin play and open with the 192.168.1.102, which is the server IP address. Unfortunately, that's not happening, but I have verified this. We can just hit the tilde key to open up the console and type in open, type in the address, hit enter. And as you can see, now I'm in the server and let me drag over the window here. You can see that we actually do have a valid connection. Um, right here is saying who connected. Uh, this is actually the virtual port because I'm on the same computer. But I have tested this between my son's computer and this, which is on the same LAN network, as well as my brother's, which is you know across a few states. So this is working. Um, obviously, if you're going across the internet, you're not going to have a local internet address like this. You're going to have your IP address, which is really easy to find um, if you just go to ipchicken.com. Uh, that'll give your local IP address to your house that your router is pulling. So with that being said, um, this is a dedicated server. Uh, you can extend upon this a lot. And in the future tutorials that we're going to be coming up with, is how to implement a custom online subsystem, which we do have in the works right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below.